So I'm actually going to be using a Dremel. Yes, a toothbrush. I'm so in love with you. You got me down again. Okay, so we are back. So I started to look into the best adhesive to use on these bumpy footwells. Now in all honesty, there are tons of adhesives and you need to do your research because one of the key things that I find is if you use the wrong one, it could have a detrimental effect. Things like, is it solvent free? Because if it has solvents in it, it could potentially attack the back of the foot mat and even worse, potentially damage the gel coat and the fiberglass. So we don't want any of that. So solvent free is key. The next one is obviously going in the sea. So things like salt can be corrosive. So you need something that's typically mold proof, something that's very good at water resistance is you know it's not going to start to lift as you get water penetration into there and the final thing which is really really important you need what's called a grab adhesive something that when the two surfaces touch together they essentially grip now there are lots of different variations of this so after tons of research and looking at lots of different reviews i identified this adhesive now, this is fairly new but there's tons of positive reviews about ob1 and its ability to actually bond underwater now, this is gonna make my life a lot easier because in this scenario obviously i can't remove the foot pads to completely ensure that the surfaces are dry so an adhesive that will stick even if the surfaces are wet it's got to be a good thing right other things to know about this particular adhesive is it is solvent free and it can be used on tons of different surfaces including fiberglass and nylon now i'm pretty sure this is nylon and we know this is fiberglass so if there's adhesive out there, this is probably the one. Now there is one other thing that I want to raise, which I'm quite proud of. Obviously the foot pads and the side of the gel coat here on the foot weld is so tight, you may be asking, how am I going to apply with this conventional nozzle, which is around four mil? Well, I started with the humble straw, thinking that I could apply this to essentially the end of the nozzle as so, and then threading it underneath and pumping the resin in through. Now a straw's pretty small, right? But it's still too big. So the search went on and I eventually found these little mini pipettes. Well, they're applicators technically. They have a hole at one end, which starts at four mil, which is perfect for applying to the end of the applicator as so. And then it goes down to a one mil flexible end applicator. So the theory is, and I haven't tested it yet, I wanted to do it on camera, is to carefully feed that underneath into the foot pad, apply some of the adhesive. Now it is gonna be hard and you will need obviously a mastic gun. I think the pressure is gonna be somewhat hard to actually pump the resin through ultimately a one mil end, but really in in this scenario you don't really have a lot of other options other than pulling the foot pads up now for some of you guys that might be an option now as you know for this particular restore it's all about oem and i can't source these anymore these foot pads and they have cedo embossed onto them so i really want to save them so the mini applicator it is so the theory today is to try and multitask and work in sections now online they advertise that the adhesive is an instant grab now when you read the fine print which not a lot of people do it actually says for best results tack for 15 minutes under a weighted circumstance. So I thought to myself, what better to use than what most of you guys have, and I have two of, <laughs> and it's one of these. Essentially a jet ski battery, a 12 volt battery, which are around 12 to 15 kilos, and this will make a perfect weight. I'm gonna work in sections, and I put this down because it's quite heavy, and essentially tack and work my way along, so I'm pushing out all of the air and moving that way. It's one of those finicky tasks that will take time, but it's worth doing because the attention to detail, it, it will show. So for any eagle-eyed viewers, you'll notice there's water stains on some of these clips. It's because we did our first attempt of sticking down before we cleaned the water stains. Then later in the video, you'll see the water stains magically disappear. See if you can spot it. Yeah? Push? Yeah. It's coming. Nothing. Zero is coming out, see? It's coming out over the top of the... It's the pressure on the top. Press the top trigger. Press it, it'll be harder, but just press it. It's the pressure. It's stopping it, mate. So that was a bit of a fail. As I suspected, the pressure at the end of the pipette is so high that I've pumped and pumped and pumped, but instead of coming out the end of the pipette because it's so small, it's actually starting to come out the rear of the plunger. So I've stopped before it's creating a mess, but I'm going to have to think of a plan B. 
So at this stage, it was a bit of a head scratching moment. Then luckily my dad turned up at just the right time and said, mate, it's your flow rate. He gave me the great suggestion of getting some electrical cable, stripping out the internals, using a heat gun, warming it up so it was more malleable. It then fit over the end of the actual applicator. It helped me increase the flow rate. He also came up with the great idea of fashioning a lever from a metal scraper, bent into position at a 90 degree angle to prise under the foot well. to give me the clearance to push the rubber applicator under the foot well, pumping the adhesive so there was no pressure. The thing is though, even with this improved flow rate, we were definitely now getting the adhesive to pump out, but the amount of pressure that you needed to put through the gun, meaning the actual seal on the back of the tube of the adhesive was given in before we were able to pump in as much adhesive that we would need. So it wasn't an exact science. It was starting to be an improvement, but we were getting into a bit of mess. I had to keep stopping and cleaning up, and the process at this stage was just trial and error. Good, Meg. Now the rotates when you just be careful it doesn't come out the top again. At this stage we were getting closer, I actually had the batteries in position, weighing it down. So 15 minutes have passed and hopefully when I take the batteries off, it's stuck down because if it hasn't, then it's not worked. <laughs> One. And that's two. That's not bad, you know. I mean, it's still it's still lifting a little bit from the corners, but the main central bit is... 15 minutes has not been enough. That's not worked as well as hoped. So yes, I initially thought it was sticking, but having been off there for around sort of a minute now, it's starting to slowly pull back up. There is like a sticky suction to it, which you can kind of hear. I mean, the manufacturer suggests it does set with water, which there is water sat there, standing water, but by the looks of it, it's either gonna need more time to set, which is contradictive to the recommendations of use, or it's not strong enough. So I need to do some more research into the glue because it was a bit of a fail to be honest. It's not sticking them down as much as I would have hoped. Now OB1 was my second choice glue. I originally opted for a product called The Dogs. I'm not going to repeat the next bit, but that was not in stock. So this was what they recommended. However, it's not really worked out. So I will be taking it back and hopefully getting a different product. In addition, the little pipette idea, which was a great idea in principle, was ultimately a fail. We opted for a piece of old wire cut to length, which still was able to bend as we needed it to but had a better flow so the pressure wasn't so high. So hopefully we have better luck, but I'm gonna to have to hit pause. So it's the next day and we finally got the correct adhesive. This was the one I was gonna purchase originally. It's the Dogs Danglies. Online, the reviews go crazy for this stuff. So for me, it's gonna be perfect because it's solvent free, it's mold resistant, it says all the right things on the tin, so we just need to give it a go. So I'm gonna be using the same principles as yesterday with the wire and the tape, albeit a little bit crude, but it's the only thing to get under those foot pads and just hopefully it works this time. Hopefully this is the glue for the job. Ooh, 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 ooh. So the battery didn't work, but my dad made a good suggestion. This is actually a large clamp, which is designed to hold plasterboard on the ceiling, but we're gonna use it by essentially putting it onto the foot well, pumping it up against the ceiling, and hopefully that tacks it down. I'll give anything a go right now. So, take three, and I've managed to get my hands on a rather heavy weight. Now this is courtesy of my good friend Doug Pickering. He's a personal trainer, so he has access to these kind of weights. Now this one goes all the way up to 90 kilos. So the theory is, if I can't get a clamp that will give me access to actually clamp these two surfaces together, then the next best thing is a weight. Now what better weight than the heaviest weight you can get in dumbbell terms? So this one is a beast. And it's got a pin system on it. 
So essentially, I can change the weight if necessary and actually bring it up and down so it goes all the way down to a lightish weight, which is very good. I mean, in this instance, I'm probably gonna go for something like 40 kilos, but we're moving away from clamps because clamps are just problematic and the way in which it needs to be clamped, you've got an angled surface and a flat surface, which in clamping surface is quite hard. You can get some clamps which have sort of movable heads and stuff, but without wanting to spend tons and tons on clamps, I'm gonna try a weight first. We're gonna use the same principle with the glue, albeit the glue wasn't amazing, but we couldn't definitively say if it was the glue or if it was the weighting system. So hopefully it was the weighting system and we can get all of these stuck down and it'd be third time lucky. So in addition to the weight, I needed a way to lift the weight out of the way of the actual footwell because the gully of the footwell was too small. So this block of wood was perfect to actually get the weight up in the air. I did need to protect the block of wood though, because obviously it was going to be 90 kilos pushing down on the actual footwell and I didn't want any compression marks. So I used a little bit of bubble wrap. From there, I made sure that the surface was clean before applying the block of weight. And then it was a case of lifting one damn heavy weight. Jesus, this weight's heavy. Got wood glue on my hands. Not wood glue, <laughs> tree sap. So the weight is on, quite literally. We're gonna wait for 15 minutes now. There's 90 kilo weight on there. And the block, I had to fashion this block to allow us to raise it up because obviously this would foul with the side of the jet ski. And I can already see that that weight has squidged the resin out. Now, hopefully that added bit of weight is gonna be just what we need. It's the anticipation, right? The 15 minutes had passed, carefully came up to the weight, lifting off, which is easier said than done. Trying to lift 90 kilos off gently, it's not very easy. Took the block off, ready to inspect and no 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 nothing so what's actually more annoying right this not working or that bloody lawnmower in the background So at this point, not only was the weight not working at the 15 minute period, but we discovered a new problem. With excessive amount of weights, when you get excessive amounts of squidging out of adhesive from the sides of the foot pad, so it was an oversight. I think you're right actually. When I pulled it up last time, I think I, pulled, I broke the bond between the two surfaces because that seems pretty tight. So on the next attempt, we left it for an hour, so even longer, not the 15 minutes that they recommend, one hour. So when I took the weight off and the block off, I think there was actually like almost like a suction to it, so it pulled the mat back up with it, making me think that it was a failure. Megs then carried on to clean it away and actually push it down, and it kind of just went and just sucked. So we put it back on, and next time when I take it off, I'm actually gonna try and you know wiggle it off more gently as opposed to pulling. Probably should have done that in the first instance, really. We left it for an hour, which is way longer than what they recommend. Um, so really it should stick. So the front panel is technically down. Now to be honest, I'm not 100% happy. So this side has not really stuck as well as we'd hoped. Now my theory is the last time we actually stuck this down, some of the adhesive is obviously set, creating essentially a barrier for any new adhesive that's going in there. So there's like almost like a set compression that we can actually achieve. So I'm gonna move along a panel and see with a fresh open cavity in space with the new weight and the new principles that we've learned, hopefully it will stick down much more flush and give the desired look. Moment of truth. Let's see if the next panel is stuck. So it slowly does it. Easier said than done with a 90 kilogram weight. Rawr! And bend the knees. Okay, roll her out. And let's see if this is stuck. Ah, that's a shame. A lot better, no, it came up. Yeah. So it's tacky, but it's not staying. For God's sake. Yeah, it's like a suction cup. It's like. I 
think the problem is, is when I take the weight off, it almost acts like a suction, and it's like, it's just not staying. I think we had it the first time and I took it off. Sorry, because they say you should redo it. Yeah, it's just lift it. Oh, for fuck's sake, I thought we had that. So ultimately, it is another fail. Okay, I'm gonna hit pause and do a bit more research. I hope this is worth it, so whoever wants to repair 1991 XP foot pads without taking them off, this pays off. So at this stage, I was basically losing my mind. I basically packed up tools for the day, and me and Megs just decided to put the actual block of wood back on and the weight on the section that already had glue, just in the hope, I guess, that over like 24 hours, 48 hours, that it would stick down. So we won. I beat these footwells. It took a long, long time. And as you can see, a bit of time has passed, two weeks to be exact. We're basically trial and error, putting the adhesive underneath, compressing it down with a big block of wood and a large weight. It was a bit of a pain, I'm not gonna lie. I always knew it would be tricky, but not this tricky. We kept putting the adhesive under and the little pesky things kept popping back up, like disobedient children. But we left each one in the end 24 hours. So that gives you a sense of how long it needs to tack together. Because this is old nylon, naturally the profile of the material just wants to pop back up. So you're basically forcing against that elasticity of the material, which basically doesn't want to stick where you want it to stick. But we've done it. This side is done. I do have these little glue residues, which is basically all the adhesive, which is squidged out the side because we put so much weight on it. So they're obviously not desirable. So I have to somehow carefully cut them on. That wasn't in the script. It wasn't in the plan. So I don't necessarily have the answer right now, guys, but I'm going to be careful not to cut into the gel coat. So obviously I'm going to have to cut it away. It is a masticky based material. So I'm hoping I can pull it to an extent with a little bit of a cut line and it will naturally want to come away. But overall, clean foot wells, stuck down, just got to do the other side. So that's 24 hours per section. <laughs> so it's going to be a bit of a long one. So we're two years on like the previous episode and the next bit that came after sticking them down was quite boring. It actually took weeks and weeks of actually slowly cutting away. I actually came away and came back and did it in sort of phases because it took, in all honesty, probably about half an hour per each bit of glue. So in all honesty, if I were to do it again, I'd probably try and wipe away most of the adhesive whilst it was actually wet. But the issue with that is, is as it's being compressed, naturally, the more you move away, it just keeps pushing out. But two years on, the foot pads are all stuck down, apart from one instance that's popped back up. All of the glue is now gone, and it was a hell of a mission. It probably took the best part of two months. But the demonstration for you guys should be, if you persevere, you can get results. The whole point of this series is about demonstrating that these classics, they can be restored if you just take the time and have a methodical approach. Thank you for all the cool messages that I've had on the previous episode of people sort of thanking me for doing an authentic approach to the restore of this. The whole point of this is to not sort of show you the perfect flawless process. Ultimately, these little tasks, there's no rule book for how to do them. So I want you guys to see an authentic experience, hence what you probably see in most of these five, six takes, but that's the reality of how long it takes to do it. So that's the footwells done. The next thing we're gonna be moving on to is catching back up with the decals, having an overhaul of the engine, probably change things like fuel lines, and we'll get into the more mechanical side of things, we'll probably investigate and look at the rear pump, see what the impeller looks like, and we're getting pretty close then to this ski basically being showroom ready. Ready. and I'm gonna be doing an episode specifically on tracking down an OEM cover for this ski. I've only taken a peek in the box of it yet. I'm not taking it out yet because I want to do it authentically and actually real time with you guys on camera so you can see my first impression. As always guys, thank you for everyone who's watching the episodes. Thank you for everyone who's subscribing and thank you for everyone that's following along on my Instagram and Facebook. It's great to see the interaction and great to see that you guys like it and ultimately keeping the classics alive. So that's it for this episode guys. Check in in the next episode and thank you for watching. Is this it?